In this tutorial, we're going to create a basic invoice form for tracking purchases. And it's a basic invoice form because of the relationship that's going to exist between the invoice table and the product table. At the moment, there's no relationship, but we're going to set it up so that on each invoice, we can sell a product. So we want to have a one-to-many relationship between the product and invoice table. So each invoice will have one product, but each product could appear on many different invoices. The previous tutorial tells you how to create relationships, and so we're just going to run through very briefly the, the creation of a relationship between these two tables. So I'm going to close my relationship view, and I'm going to open my invoice table in design view. I'm going to add on a machine ID, which is going to be a lookup using the wizard and the information is going to come from my product table. Within my product table I want the machine ID, the machine name and the selling price. And I'm going to sort the information in ascending order of machine name. And finish. So I save the table that has the relationship on it, then I'm going to close my table and view the relationship. The relationship is currently undefined and I'm going to double click on that line, enforce referential integrity and I now have a one-to-many relationship between my product table and my invoice table. So now I'm going to create a form. I'm going to choose create and I'm going to use a wizard to create the form and I simply select the information that I would like to appear on my form. Starting with the invoice table, I'm going to take all the information. I can either use the single arrow here or the double arrow to throw everything across. Because I have the machine ID from the invoice table, when I now choose my product table, I want the information from there but not the machine ID. It's already in there. So name, manufacturer, color, category, bar pressure, cost price, selling price, RRP. I'll not worry too much at the moment about the stock level, the low warning, but I will put in supplier. Because my invoice table has a link to the employee and the customer, it means that I can choose my customer table and I can put in the surname and the forename. Then I can go to my employee table and again I'll add in the surname and the forename. And notice when I add that in, because the fields have the same name for the customer and the employee, it's changed those to table underscore customer dot surname. It doesn't have to do those for the other fields because those field names are unique in that particular context. It'll now show me a preview of what my form is going to look like. I'm going to have a columnar form. And the name that I want for my form in this case is FRM Invoice. Now this is the name that appears at the top of the form, but it'll also name the form based on this value. So I may as well change it at the moment and finish. So I have a form which is ready for me to start entering information about the transactions that have taken place. The good thing about this form is that when I start to select information, I choose an employee ID, automatically the purchase date is entered. That's because when I set up my table, I put in today's date as the default value. I'll choose a customer ID. And what we should notice is that the customer information and the employee information are being pulled from the respective table into this form. So I don't have to enter it again. Similarly, when I choose a machine, all of the machine information appears in the form automatically. So there I have a purchase that has now been tracked. What hasn't happened is I don't yet have a calculation for the invoice grand total. So that will come in a later tutorial. But I do have a method of tracking the sales, one sale at a time at the moment.